Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good evening. It's been too long. Uh, wow, I am happy to be back. It's been two weeks since we last talked when we had Kristen here. That was a good, uh, good show. We got to meet her and do some coaching. But I'm really excited uh, to be back with you after a big break and talk about overcoming setbacks. Um, it's a topic I'm passionate about. I posted uh, an article on LinkedIn I'll share here in chat in a minute um, about what I call asymmetric consequences, which is part of the way you can have setbacks. But I'm super excited uh, today just to be back. Uh, I've missed streaming. Um, I was off with family, which was great, but I was away from uh, the chance to spend time here. And uh, I'm looking forward to a good show. So I'll repeat this later in the show, but for those of you who don't know how Easy Coach works, which is probably nobody who's here right when the stream starts, um, <clears throat> we are a Q&A based show. And the way we do Q&A is we have a question and answer widget um, and Twitch changed the way overlay, or I'm sorry, component extensions work. And so it used to be that the component extension, you'd find it, I think, at the bottom, at the top of the screen. But now Twitch docks all extensions on the right hand edge. So uh, if you're on mobile, this probably won't apply. But if you're watching on the web and you want to ask a question, uh, you need to go to the right hand edge of the screen. I'm going to do it here. You should get a little circular question icon. It's blue and green. Um, yes. Good job, Kyle. The mysterious item is the hat. We'll talk about the hat later when some other people show up and they notice it. Um, but that is the mystery item. Um, in any case, uh, if you want to ask questions, um, and please do because we're question driven, uh, grab the extension off the dock at the right, open it up. It will let you ask an extension, uh, sorry, ask a question. Um, the moderators will approve the question and then the rest of you can vote on it. So today we're going to talk about setbacks and overcoming them. We're going to talk about the article I wrote, which is related, and I need your questions to drive it. So right now there's no questions in there, um, so you'll have to have at it. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm going to pop up another window here real quick. Uh, and that window is going to pop up over my face because it always does. Um, so this is the article I wrote um, over on LinkedIn. I'll put the link over in. Um, yeah, Lama, you're right. You have to build the suspense. That was too easy. But uh, anyway, here's the actual link to the article if you want to read it. It's related to what we were doing. I'll pop out from behind the window. I'm not going to rehash this whole article here because you can read it now, right? Like that's the idea, so you don't need to. Um, and so I'm going to take it down, but the, the links in chat, we'll repost it if we refer to it again. Uh, and meanwhile, I do want to take a minute and say, hey, uh, LinkedIn is incredibly important. Um, it's not just important for me. Um, it's actually the number one tool from a networking viewpoint. And I want to tell a story there. One of our longtime subscribers, Akble, um, just got a job after, I don't know, a six to eight month search. And I don't know if he's here tonight. I'm not sure if he's ready to have uh, his job discussed in public. But uh, LinkedIn's a primary tool. And a few weeks ago, I did a how to find a job um, uh, talk. And some people rightly ask, gee, is my answer to everything networking? And it's not. Um, the way to find a job, and that isn't our main topic tonight, but the way to find a job includes building your skills and being good at something and how you do your search. But a key to finding a job is 100% um, your network and reaching out through that network. And uh, Aqua's real name is Steve. He doesn't mind if I share that. 
And what Steve has found is that without being introduced into a target company, he wouldn't even get a call back. And so finally, after enough introductions to enough people, he got hired. And that's great for him. Uh, but the point of it is, coming all the way back to this article being on LinkedIn, um, if you're not on LinkedIn and you're trying to build your career, you should be. Uh, now, when you're on LinkedIn, the Easy Coach is on LinkedIn, so you can follow the Easy Coach there. Um, you can connect to me personally. Um, I generally accept most connections that I recognize from here on Twitch. Um, <clears throat> so, and obviously this article, if you go look it up, is written by me, makes me easy to find. But the point is you need that. All right, let's come back to setbacks. So what do I want to share about that? Um, well, what I want to share is, look, we all have setbacks and every career is going to be full of them. And so what you can do is you can either be surprised by them and not have a plan for when something goes wrong, or you can have a plan and have some idea of how am I going to handle it when things go wrong and why it matters how you're going to handle it is uh, if you have a plan to handle setbacks when they occur in your life, you're going to take them more smoothly and do better. You're going to be able to what we call respond rather than react. React usually means you're doing whatever comes to the top of your mind, like when you're dodging someone punching you. Uh, responding means that you've considered it and you have a plan. So the thing I would say about setbacks is you need to have a plan. Um, and so we're going to talk about what kind of plan you should have and how that can benefit you. But we're also going to tell some stories about setbacks I've seen. So there you have it. Um, and I'm going to take a second pop up discord and announce that we're live. Um, so give me one second while I multitask here. All right, good enough. <clears throat> so that part's done. Um, all right, so what else do we need to do? Um, so setbacks, they happen to everyone. Uh, what I guess I'd say, uh, let's talk about setback stories. So I've had several in my career, uh, some of which I've shared here before. Uh, the two most dramatic that I think would interest people is I really managed to get myself fired twice early in my career. And you can't, um, there's no real way to sugarcoat getting fired uh, other than as a setback. Now, in neither case was I so unlucky as to have someone walk in and say, hey, you're fired. But from a practical viewpoint, Early in my career, uh, during the dot-com bubble era, when companies downsized, they had to decide who to downsize. And believe me, those choices are not accidental. When a company needs to downsize, um, they look at who's on their team and they decide who they can live without. And I put myself in a position where my companies could live without me. Um, and uh, <laughs> you don't want to do that. But if you do, you also have to decide how are you going to overcome it. And uh, I'd say the first thing, so I'm going to go through my lessons. Um, and I've got them written down here, so I'm going to refer to them. But the first thing is, I would say anytime you have a screw up, which is a setback or a potential setback, no excuses. Don't make excuses for it. That's hard, but own it. At least at first own it to yourself. If you're in a punitive environment, maybe you need to make excuses where you work, but you want to own that mistake inside yourself and be able to look in the mirror. The biggest failure I see with folks in the workplace is they're afraid to actually say, I was wrong. I blew it. I forgot it. Um, and because everybody knows you blew it and you forgot it, you're not actually fooling anyone. You just look like you uh, can't face it. And, and um, worst case, that you're a liar. And those traits won't help you. So thing one, face it. Uh, 
<clears throat> thing two, um, be willing to visibly learn from what you did wrong. So look, mistakes happen own up to it and fix the mistake. Every mistake I got out of, I fixed quickly. And uh, in the cases where I managed to run myself out of a job, I tried to learn and be different in the next job. Now, obviously it took me a couple of cycles. Hopefully you'll be faster than I was. Um, ask for help. Uh, it's not bad when you make a mistake to say, look, I know I screwed that up. How can I do better? And then actually do it. You don't just say it. Um, work extra hard and I'm going to, uh, switch over here to see if we have questions coming in. Uh, remember, uh, no questions, um, nothing to talk about. So you guys have to set up your questions for what you want to know about setbacks and nobody's entered a question yet. So I can keep telling stories for a little while, but if you don't have questions about either the article I wrote or, uh, setbacks, we won't have any questions. So it'll be a short broadcast and I'll get to have dinner. Um, but that would be sad because I've been eager to be back with you all as an audience. So, uh, look, um, let's talk about the rest of what you need to do um, that I think you need to do. So when you've had a setback, hey, Chalupa Whale, good to see you. Welcome in. Um, when you've had a setback, uh, which happens to everyone, um, it's a good time to put in extra hours and work extra hard. In other words, you wanna be on top of what you're doing. Um, and so that's the last time to like get depressed and slip out of work. You've gotta be able to face the fact that you're a little bit in the doghouse. And I will talk about a scenario at Amazon where I got myself into the doghouse. Uh, let's see. So my point there is everyone has things they're valued for and they have liabilities. Um, nobody at work absolutely loves you. Uh, nobody at work absolutely and completely hates you, even if they seem like it. They have some scorecard in their mind of things you do well and things you do poorly. If you've had a setback, it's a good time to be racking up points on the things you do well. Um, patience and humility. Uh, be prepared in your mind, um, be prepared in your mind. I appreciate we've got the first question in. It's a good one. Um, remember if you want to ask questions, uh, you can do so through the link provided, or you can do it, uh, through the extension and then other audience members can vote on them. So I like this question. We'll get to it here in a minute. Um, point is though. Patience and humility. When you do make a mistake, you've got to face the mistake. Uh, and then you have to uh, realize that it's going to take a little while for people to forget it. And the story I usually tell here is the analogy of folks throwing rocks in a pond. And so um, you can stop throwing rocks in a pond stop making mistakes or having setbacks or having a behavior people don't like, but it's going to take a while for the ripples to settle out. And that's like people's memory of you. Their memory of you is sticky. And once they decide, like they did in my case, that guy has a big mouth um, and he talks too much and he's critical, which is how I was in the situations I got in trouble. Uh, you can stop doing that, but it takes a long time for people to say, hey, you know what? Ethan's different. You're a different person now. So uh, be a little patient, be humble, but it's important to refute actual falsehoods. So if someone believes you did something wrong that you didn't, or that you're responsible where you truly aren't, it's important to clarify that. Uh, own the guilt you have, not the guilt you don't. So step one in overcoming a setback is really having a plan to do so. Because when it happens, you're going to be emotional. Other people around you are going to be emotional. You're probably going to feel bad that something went wrong. Um, you know, if you've read my article or if you're reading it now, the one that uh, I'll stick the link in the chat again because we had a bunch of people join in. Uh, let's see here. 
Yep. So that's the LinkedIn article I wrote on asymmetric consequences. Keep the questions and voting coming, by the way. We have a couple in, but only one vote on each. So those people are going to get to go first. Anyway, um, if you have asymmetric consequences and they hit you, if something goes wrong suddenly and unexpectedly, uh, you want to have a plan. And you want to have already thought through, what is my character and how am I going to behave when things go wrong? Because it's a critical time and you don't want to be making it up on the fly. And believe me, if you're making it up on the fly under pressure, you will do all sorts of things that you didn't think you'll do. You'll lie about it. You'll make excuses for it. You may not be a liar. You may not believe in lying. You may not be an excuse maker. You may believe in owning your shit. Uh, thank you for the follow there, Longest Moonwalker. Um, but you don't want to be... Uh, you don't want to be blindly surprised. Um, you want to have a plan for how you're going to handle it. And so that's my main message of how to overcome setbacks. And then it's about how do you show value beforehand and afterwards. So we have a few questions in. There's a couple of things I do want to say. Uh, number one, I, probably uh, most of the people here today have probably already followed us on uh, this channel as well as on YouTube. I do want to say we have a longtime um, uh, follower, Shivang, who's taken over publishing our podcasts. And so we now have reliable conversion of these streams, not only into YouTube videos, but also into podcasts. So if you have friends that can't watch on a particular uh, evening when we do these, I know 6 p.m. here uh, can be late in Europe where we have some followers and extremely late um you know also on the east coast uh they can catch it as a podcast and it goes out not only on apple but everywhere else all right um so with that in mind uh let's see do i have any other stories i want to share i'll get to some of my other stories later um i want to thank shivang for that let's take the first question um and that first question which the mods will pop up is what are some ways to show resilience in the face of a setback? So I would say uh, one of the ways to show resilience in the face of a setback um, is uh, you're gonna, um, you need to just show up for work and do your job. In other words, some people allow themselves to get depressed or they're afraid of the feedback and the worst thing I think you can do is hide. Now you can be humble, like it's not a time to be blowing your own horn or asking for new raises or assignments or things like that, but you can't cringe away. In other words, if you act like a criminal and like a failure, everyone will let you. If you act like, yeah, that happened, but I'm gonna fix it and move on, um, People will say, oh, he fixes it and moves on. She fixes it and moves on. I would say, uh, and I'm going to tell a couple of the stories of my greatest setbacks at Amazon. The number one thing I did to overcome those setbacks was uh, I um, fixed them quickly. So I worked long hours. I came in. I was present. I was visible. And I got the problems fixed. And when people ask who did it or what got screwed up, I said, we made a mistake. I made a mistake. And that really changes. Uh, if you just think about how you react with others. Um, hey, Kristen. Yeah, we'll post the link for questions again. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see. I can do that. There you go. There's a link for questions, or you can do it in the overlay. All right. Um, anyway, uh, so there you have it twice. All right. Uh, what are some ways uh, to show resilience? Um, if you're overcoming a setback, basically you have to uh, be present, fix it, own it, and then move on. Um, you don't want to be apologetic forever. You want to treat a setback like, yes, there was a mistake. I learned from it. I'm willing to adjust, but now I'm here doing my job. Um, the last thing I would say, though, is 
if you do all these things and it becomes clear that you're a leper in the organization, that people aren't going to give you a break, give you another chance, particularly if you've lost the support of your direct boss, then that's finally the time to get out. But even then, I wouldn't run away till the problem is fixed. Uh, whatever went wrong, I would own fixing it um, for myself, but also just because I think that's the right way to be stronger. So um, hopefully that answers the question, what are some of the ways to show resilience? Uh, look, it doesn't answer it enough, I've realized. A point I'm going to be making next week, I'm doing a show next week about how to get to do the job you love, how to get to do a job that you really like, and to do whatever it is you dream of doing. Um, if that's what you want to do, uh, what you can do in that circumstance is uh, to show resilience, realize your career is long. And so if you're going to have a long career, uh, you don't have to win immediately. Resilience equals patience at some level. Uh, you can show resilience by simply doing your job and being consistent over a little bit of time and not letting what happened throw you off your game. So that's my fundamental advice. Um, all right. Let's go to the next question. And that question is, um, what did you apply from competing in a sport to the business world regarding setbacks? That's a great question. <laughs> um, and I can think of a setback that'll be a great story there. So I play ice hockey, pretty competitive sport. I still play. And a few of the people who come on, on the broadcast are actually... Um, they're actually, uh, they play with me. So they're, they're on one of my teams. Um, but uh, the thing I can think of is, it's been a while now, five, six years ago, maybe longer, maybe seven years ago, time flies. I was captain of Amazon's ice hockey team, which is not the honor it might sound like. Uh, we simply used the Amazon name and we had a pickup team in the beer league and I was captain. But if you know anything about ice hockey, it's the responsibility of the captain to protect his team and to stand up for his team members. Um, and I was playing on a team with a bunch of really talented young uh, players out of Canada because we're in Seattle and we hire a lot of people from Canada. And um, another team uh, took a cheap shot at one of the younger players on my team. And I immediately went after that guy. Um, and uh, long story short is we ended up in an altercation at the boards. Uh, and the setback I thought of after the game was I'm a 40. At that time, I was like a 44 year old executive at Amazon. I was thinking, what the hell am I doing getting in a fight with some random guy? I don't know um, up against the boards in an ice hockey game, uh, you know, I'm out of my mind. Like, what am I doing? Um, and so I thought about that and I just thought, uh, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, and that was a setback in the sense that I chose in that case to get out of the role that was putting me in a situation to fail. And that's actually a specific lesson um, uh, having issues with the question extension on mobile. Okay. Uh, so we had to do some modifications, the extension to make them work this way. And they might not have uh, uh, been. Um, uh, yeah, we'll put your we'll put your question in manually. Chalupa Whale, thank you for putting it in. And we had to modify the extension um, because uh, Twitch changed the way extensions work. Enjoyable gaming. Hello, good evening. Um, so we had to change the way the extension works because Twitch made a way uh, change to the way extensions work and it's possible we broke it on mobile. 
So uh, we'll take that feedback. We'll get hold of Awesome Dave, our producer who wrote the extension, and fix it. In any case, uh, the thing I applied from competing in a sport in that case was get out of the bad situation that's putting me in a position to fail. So I should have talked about this. If you're having setbacks because you're in a role that doesn't fit your skills, you should make a change. You either need to learn the skills and master the skills, or you need to get out of that situation. So I didn't think about it, but this is a great question. Um, so uh, it's a great question because it raises the point, um, should you get out of a bad role Normally, no, but if you're in a place where you don't have the skills to be successful and the root cause of your setback is you have skills that aren't really yours or that you don't want to have, then you need to make a change. And I decided that as an executive, I didn't want to be in fights with random people in ice hockey. And so I got out of the captain role and I started playing only with friends um, that I didn't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, and so that's making a change to get away from the problem. Let me think about what else I might have learned from sports that I could apply here. Um, sports are about teamwork. So they are about relying on your team. Um, so I think that's another thing you can do uh, is recognize, look, if I um, am I struggling because I'm either not paired up with the right person or not on the right team, um, you have to think about your team and think about the team dynamic. Uh, and look, I've talked about owning your failures, but if your failure wasn't really just you, you may need to talk to your team about it without accusing anybody and getting them to be different. So that's a big thing. Probably some other people have better lessons from team sports. I never played team sports with a coach as a kid very much. And the coaches I had, I don't think were great role models. Um, so they were kind of doing it because they needed to for kids sports. So um, what else would you apply from competing as sport? I don't have any more answers, but I welcome chat. All right, keep the questions coming. Um, uh, Ganine, I'm glad you don't have a question, but you're getting a lot out of it. Welcome in. Appreciate you being here. Um, let's, by the way, uh, we're far enough into the broadcast to take a break and do the daily question or the weekly question. So this is always fun for chat. Everybody gets to play along. If you haven't said anything in chat yet, this is your chance. What we do is every uh, week when I do a broadcast, we take a question off Arthur Aaron's list of 36 questions that build a deeper community. And we've done the first four. We're now on number five. Um, and uh, Kyle, I see your comment. That's a good thing from uh, what you can get out of sports. I like both things you say here. Um, pushing yourself hard, uh, push yourself past what you think you can handle. I think team sports also give you the idea of I'm going to work harder than I would have for myself because I don't want to let the team down. And so a big aspect of overcoming setbacks is not being willing to let your team and your teammates down. Um, and so I think that's a big aspect you can think about. Similarly, coming back from an injury is a type of setback. That's a great point. Um, you can play injured at work just like you can play injured uh, in a sport. Um, so uh, good point there. Um, you know, I was married. I got divorced. The divorce sucked. I'm happily remarried now. But uh, I was playing injured at that time, right? I had a lot on my mind. Uh, I have a coworker. Um, he's got a very sick family member, you know, deathly ill, potentially deathly ill. Um, that's a terrible handicap. And so playing through that is a form of resilience. Um, and getting good at dealing with, res uh, getting good at dealing with adversity is always going to be useful at work and, and setbacks are a type of adversity. 
Okay, anyway, the fun question of the week after that heavy topic. Um, when did you last sing to yourself? And then when did you last sing to someone else? So I always answer these. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll say in, in our family, there's a lot of music in the car. There's music in other times. And I have an awful singing voice, which right now I will not grace you with. Uh, but sometimes I sing in the car anyways. Um, and so everybody, I, I appreciate Enjoyable Gaming stepping up first uh, and saying he doesn't sing to no one. Um, and uh, Pink Dragon singing to herself a couple of hours ago. Uh, I was purposely singing in the car, both because I liked the tune and to inflict it on my daughter, um, because her eye rolls are a ton of fun. Um, and it, she sometimes watches these broadcasts. So if she's watching, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, that's, uh, that's for you. But I was singing to her. Um, and since there were other people in the car, I was both singing to myself and others. But everyone else, chime in. Uh, Ojo4, I sung to my cat a few nights ago. Does that count as someone else? Yeah, close enough. It says, well, uh, when did you last sing to yourself and someone else? Um, Ganine, I play guitar and sing almost every day, but too afraid to do it in public. Well, I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad you sing every day and enjoy the guitar. Uh, my sister played guitar, um, uh, and it was great. I grew up around her folk singing. Um, old 60s tunes. Uh, okay, uh, Chalupa Whale, I probably sing some song daily, but not to anyone else. So the push is, when did you last sing to somebody else? Um, probably both happened today. I sang to my sister and sing to myself in the shower. Yeah, I get the singing in the shower. I don't do it very much, but I get it. Uh, Kristen, about 10 minutes ago. Uh, yeah, Kristen has young kids. And so uh, it's not a surprise to me that she was singing just 10 minutes ago. Uh, but Kristen, was that to your kids or to yourself? Christmas time is perfect. It is true. Um, I love Christmas carols. It's one of the things I like to sing. Uh, I also sing in church, although badly. Um, but that's another place I sing. And I guess that's like to others. All right. So the point here is uh, uh, <laughs> Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Yep. Uh, I used to sing a song to my daughter every night going to bed. Um, all right. Uh, now she's too old for that. Um, all right. Uh, so let's see. We'll go back to questions now, and then I'll talk a little about the article. I appreciate you putting in questions, and I'm sorry we've learned there's a problem apparently on mobile. Uh, so if you are on mobile and can't get a question in, put it in chat and our moderators will move it over. Um, we had to change the widget, as I've said a couple times, and apparently we may have broken something on mobile. So this question's a big one. Um, you can do everything right, gather all the data, analyze it, engage your stakeholders, etc. But you just get unlucky and the project or product doesn't work out. As a leader, how do you get an entire team who put all their effort into this project or product to either remain motivated to fix it or simply move on to the next opportunity? To me, that's something you want to do up front. It's a little bit like what I said, preparing um, yourself to overcome setbacks. It's really hard to... Um, deal with failure if you've not thought about it a little bit in advance. And it's really hard to motivate a team if you haven't set them up with the idea that uh, it's a possibility. Not that you're looking for it, but that sometimes software doesn't ship. Sometimes popular products, whatever it is you do, if you design shirts, they don't sell. Um, any of those things can happen. And so I think part of it is, say, is setting up the culture of how your team is going to react to setbacks. And uh, what I've read on this indicates that it's most important to be a learning culture. So if you set up 
your world as you have a learning culture. We have a learning culture and we're going to need when when something goes wrong, we're going to learn from it and adapt. I think that attitude, that tone you set of look, failure is normal. There's a great story about this. I can't remember what book it's from now. It's the story, and uh, uh, this will be good. I have a lot of female audience members. It's the story of the woman who created Spanx. And so if you're a guy, you probably have no idea what Spanx are. Uh, And all the ladies probably know them very well. But Spanx are essentially footless pantyhose. Um, And the footless pantyhose, uh, this woman wanted the pantyhose because they squeezed her bulgy parts into the better shape um, and they made her look slimmer, but she didn't need the feet coming down in the shoes she wanted to wear. So she kept cutting the feet off her pantyhose. Um, And one day she thought, you know what? This is dumb. Why doesn't somebody just make pantyhose with no feet? Well, um, the story is she had been taught by her parents from when she was very young to that failure was an opportunity. And so I guess her dad at dinner every week used to ask her uh, or every day, what did you try today? Not like, what did you do or how did it go? But like, what did you try? And it brought her into a world. Um, hey, Tree of Life, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad you found us through Devin. Uh, Love to work with him, too. Um, That culture where you've set up, whether at work or at home, the idea that you we're not here to always succeed. We're here to try things, to test things, to experiment. Um, That kind of culture that's a learning culture is a positive culture. Uh, Part of this goes to what's called the growth mindset. There's this book, oh hell, I can't remember the author now. Um, It's this idea of the growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And yeah, Ojo 4 says fail forward. Uh, 40 Pink Dragon says culture and try, try again. These are all correct. Basically, uh, this idea of the growth mindset says some people believe that their success or failure is based on their innate intelligence and their abilities And if they fail, they're screwed. They're never going to be better. They're never going to be smarter. And so the best thing to do is avoid situations where you might fail. The growth mindset says, look, you can learn. You can gain new skills and you view failure and setbacks not as, oh, my God, we're screwed forever. But, oh, I didn't know that. Now I know more. I can try again. So this woman who is creating Spanx, she went out and tried to convince a number of textile manufacturers, basically clothing makers, hey, I've got this idea for a product. I want you to make footless pantyhose. What turned out, most of those factories were owned by dudes. And the dudes were all like, yeah, whatever. They were blowing her off, she thinks, both because she was a young woman and because it was a product they weren't familiar with. So so she got blown off time after time, but she kept trying. It didn't convince her to stop. She thought she had a good idea and she was resilient. So she kept learning. Well, the moral of the story, and you guys can all go look up this product if you don't know it, is that um, she did finally get her product made. It's really funny how she got it made. She told some guy about it. He blew her off. And then he went um, he went home and was kind of busting on her to his wife and daughter and saying, you won't believe this crazy uh, idea this woman had today. She wanted me to make footless pantyhose. Um, and the wife and daughter both said, call her back. She's got a good idea. Call her back. And so that's the guy who ended up manufacturing them. Well, I think she was... Um, I'll have my facts slightly wrong here, but she's like the fastest woman to a billion dollar enterprise 
from the time of founding to the time of having a billion dollars in American history. Um, there are lots of female billionaires, but I think she's the fastest to a billion is my recollection. And she's still pretty young, but like she did this in her 20s. So, uh, yeah, Spanx is doing that well as far as I know. So. So anyway, that's about persistence. I guess finishing off the answer to this question, it's all how you set up the culture and it's also how you lead. If you personally look inspired and treat the situation like an opportunity and like a chance to get better, your team will too. If you don't treat it like an opportunity uh, and you treat it like, oh, we're screwed. Um, you know, we're in the doghouse now. Your team will treat it that way as well. So uh, we have a thin list of questions um, here. Uh, I'll answer those. And then if we don't have more, we'll either have a short uh, chat today uh, or I can share a couple of stories and then we'll move on. But I always welcome more questions and uh, please put them into the widget. Uh, if you're having trouble on mobile, let people know your votes on mobile uh, in chat and we'll get the extension fixed for next time. Um, so, uh, Kristen, I see your question there, but maybe you can go ahead and put it in uh, through our question system just so others can see it and vote on it. So question now is, how should you manage mistakes uh, other people make on a project that you are ultimately in charge of and responsible for? Well, um, it's two things there. Uh, First, make sure it's really a mistake and not just something different than what you would like. Um, my point there is be careful to discriminate between they didn't do it the way I'd have done it and it's actually wrong or bad. And I'm not saying, of course, other people make mistakes, but sometimes we can be narrow minded about if it's not my way, it's wrong. And that's a leadership problem. If someone else is getting good results in a different way than you are, celebrate that because it means they may one day have a way better idea and you don't want a bunch of mindless droids who just follow what you do. That said, um, how should you manage mistakes, true mistakes other people make on a project? Um, so you do have to have accountability. Some of this is in the book we talk about called extreme ownership. You do have to have accountability where you're holding others accountable. So you need to call a mistake a mistake, um, but you don't need to be punitive about it. You then have to talk about how we're gonna fix it and what we're gonna learn and that the key difference is separating focus on the problem from focus on the person. So, for example, right now I have a manager on my team who's struggling to hire for his team. And so it's not exactly a mistake, but it's like a mistake. It's a problem. It's a setback. Um, and I'm responsible, right? I have to deliver the project just like he does. But to my boss, he doesn't care about that manager. He cares about the project and whether or not it's done. So I'm ultimately responsible. So what I have to do is um, I have to hold him accountable for not hiring, but then help. And so that's a specific example. And so I said, look, we have not hired fast enough. It's holding back our ability to deliver. And we must put more focus on that. So I set the standard and I called a mistake and a problem a problem. I didn't sugarcoat it. But then I can either just beat up on him and say, um, you are a problem. You are failing. You, and I can personalize it and you need to fix it, or um, I can offer help and say, okay, uh, what I'm actually doing is we're gonna have a meeting and we're gonna go through the data of where we're succeeding, where we're not, where we're finding candidates and where we're not. And then 
we're gonna um, figure out a plan together. And I've gotten him help. So the question here, how should you manage mistakes others make that you're responsible for? Uh, number one, you can't throw them under the bus. Um, you, you can't, uh, you can't publicly blame within your team unless you're planning on firing that person. And even then other people will learn like, oh, I get it. If I screw up, I'm going to get blamed and then fired. Um, so they'll hide their screw ups and you don't want that. Uh, what you can do though is call it out as a mistake. And we talked about some of this in the stream I did coaching Mugendra because uh, he had a mistake. His team made some mistake and he needed to call it out to them publicly so they could all learn from it. Now, again, if you've set up a culture that says when there are problems, we're going to talk about them openly and we're not going to blame people. We're just going to learn, fix them and move on. People will be OK with it as long as you live up to it. The hard thing to do is to not blame or be vindictive when your boss is mad at you and you know it was someone on your team who did something they shouldn't have. That's really hard to do. Yeah, uh, 004 says absolutely correctly, give praise in public, correct in private. So um, a lot of this, what's coming out, and thank you all for helping me extra extract this, Overcoming setbacks and dealing with mistakes is really about your own internal culture, how you're going to handle adversity, and the culture you set up in the team around you. And if you're part of a larger culture, and that's a punitive culture, that's a pretty good indication that you need to get out of that culture. Um, and so I would say be aware if that's happening. All right, we got a bunch of votes for this next question. It's also the last question we have in. So if you have other questions, um, put them in now. Otherwise, I'll tell a couple stories and give you a chance after I answer this one. So the question is, what first steps do you take when facing a setback but have no idea what went wrong? I think the only thing you can do there is acknowledge that there's obviously a problem and start some kind of investigation. Now this question, and if you wrote this question and want to clarify in chat, I'd love the clarification in chat. Do you mean like someone's mad at you? Uh, you have no idea, like you have no idea why they're pissed? Or do you mean something broke and you don't know what's broken or why it broke? because those kind of have different answers. Uh, for the case where you have to investigate um, why it broke, that feels more like a technical, you know, acknowledge that something isn't working and talk about form a plan to go investigate it. Um, so for example, uh, um, yeah, having, uh, Chalupa Whale says haven't gotten to root cause yet. There's this technique called the five whys we use a lot, which is we ask like, oh, this went wrong. Well, why? And then you dig down and usually about five whys deep, you get to the root cause. Um, but I'll give an example. Uh, today I was talking to a peer of mine who runs a division um, at T-Mobile. And I'm going to go speak at the T-Mobile offices in a couple weeks. And um, I was telling him about a problem we had with our T-Mobile account where uh, an extra service got added to our bill. And so our bill shows up and it's 50 bucks higher and we didn't add this service, or at least we don't think we did. And um, I was talking to him about it and he said, you know, I, I don't know what caused that, but we will investigate. And presumably he will, but the point is own the fact there's a problem, don't doubt it. Now, if the question you really meant here, because I'm not sure who wrote the question, they haven't showed up to clarify, at least in chat, is, um, hey, I'm being treated like something broke or I did something wrong, but I don't know what it is. 
Okay, that's a screwy situation, but I realize it's real. It's real in a lot of people's lives. They have bosses who treat them like lepers or give them the cold shoulder, but don't level with them on what the issue is. I think you've got only a couple of options here. Basically, ask the boss or ask whoever's got an issue. You don't have to be confrontational, but you do have to be direct and just say, um, it seems like uh, you're a little bit distant right now or whatever words you want to use. Is there a problem? Is there something I can do differently? And if they still won't tell you, that's another one of my famous easy coach time to get the hell out things because I don't have time and you don't have enough heartbeats left in your heart to deal with people who won't at least tell you what the issue is. Um, it probably applies in relationships too, by the way. Uh, if you're with someone who just wants to give you a cold shoulder uh, and won't tell you what the issue is, might be time uh, to update your dating profile. You didn't know it was a dating advice show too. Turns out tonight it is. All right. So um, then if they give you an answer, investigate it. The other option you have is to ask peers. Same thing, by the way, uh, every person in a dating show um, has ever done, which is they don't ask the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the husband or the wife. They ask their best friend, is he or she cheating on me? Is he or she good for me? It's the same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, career is life in a way. That's completely true. Um, all the things we talk about in career development probably help in your life too. Like you're gonna have setbacks in your regular life. I've done all the talking in terms of career, but setbacks happen in life too. Um, and that's actually a great point. I see we've had another question put in, um, but I wanna talk about that for a minute. You're gonna have setbacks in your life and it's basically the same recipe to handle them. How many of you know people who shipwreck their lives and they can't seem to get past it? Like to you, it's flipping obvious why their life is messed up, but they can't or won't face it. Um, and they always have an excuse uh, or they always deflect. Owning that something's broken, you can even leave it broken. Um, I struggle with weight. I've told people here before, I used to be really heavy. I lost the weight, but I love desserts. I have a sweet tooth. I love chocolate. Um, I'm probably never going to stop loving chocolate. And yes, this is a trivial example. It's not killing me yet. But I can first at least own the fact that, gee, if I want to be fit and I want to still eat a lot of dessert, I'm going to have to work out more or I'm going to have to diet more in order to balance that. So I either can get over my love of desserts and chocolate, option one, or I can have an alternative plan. This is pretty much like work. If there's something you're no good at at work or a type of work you hate, you're gonna have to have a plan to either get better at that or to successfully have someone else do it and not be in that kind of work. Same thing. All right, I see we have another question. But uh, we've had a good broadcast, so I'll take that question towards the end. I love that people are voting on them. Um, and I apologize that we're having widget problems. I will get that fixed for the extension. But let me talk about a couple of setbacks I had um, at Amazon. I've shared a story before of where uh, I, I broke something in front of Jeff Bezos. But here's a setback that's worth talking about. Um, in my very first job at Amazon, I launched Amazon Video, what's now Prime Video. And uh, when I launched it, uh, somebody says they see three questions. Interesting. Um, you'll have to let me know, Kristen, how that's possible, because I only see one. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so, Kristen, what three questions do you see? Um, I see one about... Uh, bosses making mistakes, but haven't seen any of the ones mentioned so far. All right, Kristen, I don't know what's going on in your case. Uh, we'll figure that out. <laughs> now, enjoyable gaming. I don't think Kristen's seeing triple, although it's possible. 
Um, maybe something's not updating for you, Kristen. Try refreshing. Anyway, uh, look, let me talk about what I broke. So with Amazon Video, uh, when we got ready to launch, um, I pushed hard for doing a public beta test. And I thought we were going to have trouble with that beta test. I thought the product was gonna have trouble, and so I wanted to do a beta test uh, to flush out the problems. The Amazon leadership at the time, yeah, so something's broken on mobile. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, actually, uh, one of our moderators is here. Pink Dragons, can you try pulling things up on mobile if you have your mobile handy through the Twitch app and see if you can figure out what's going on so that we can report it to um, Awesome Dave to get it fixed? And for the rest of you who are on mobile, um, maybe if you can characterize what you're seeing a little bit in chat, I won't read it all out, but we need some debugging information for Awesome Dave so he can fix whatever's wrong. Because something's clearly broken. I know we have a couple engineers who hang out here. So file a bug report for us. Um, all right, anyway. Um, for Amazon Video, I wanted to run a beta. The management wanted the launch to be a surprise. They wanted it to be like a big PR announcement. And if you run a beta, it's going to leak. So they didn't want to do that. Um, so I lost that. I was new at Amazon, and I was overruled. They said, no, we're going to have a surprise launch. Well, it turned out when we launched, the surprise was it didn't work, um, which was not a huge surprise to me. But uh, one of the things I did was I fixed it really quickly. So I and the team, I, I say I, look, my team fixed it. Um, but we banded together. Now we had data because we had launched and we had all these problem reports, just like uh, now we have problem reports about our mobile testing. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, play moderator here for a second. Um, so um, we had a... Uh, I fixed it, but one of the things that helped me survive it is I had talked about the risk. And so uh, I made the risk plain. And that again goes to culture. One way to survive setbacks is to make the risks clear. And um, hmm, we just lost a question out of the list of questions. Um, not sure, uh, clearly we're having some issues, but um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what can I do if I notice my boss has made a mistake? Uh, well, it depends a lot on your trust relationship with your boss. Um, if you have a good relationship with your boss, you privately call their attention to it. If you have a poor relationship with your boss uh, or your boss is a tyrant, you're going to have to um, think about what you do and uh, the first thing I would think about is, am I sure? I talked a few minutes ago about the idea that a mistake, what you think of as a mistake, might be simply something, somebody doing something differently. Um, I appreciate the host there, Wizgrim. So thanks for hosting. Um, but uh, what can I do if my boss has made a mistake? Well, you're going to need to be sure you're right. Uh, I mentioned earlier I got myself made expendable at a couple of startups. I thought people were making mistakes. I was being very critical of them. And what it turned out is that my understanding of the business needs weren't as complete as I thought. And I was pretty much wrong. So... Um, <clears throat> that's, uh, an issue. Let's see here. Got a message I have to look at real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, sweet. Um, so the question we dropped out was extraneous, which is great. All right. Um, what can I do if I notice my boss has made a mistake? What I would do, um, is uh, I'd make sure I was right. I'd ask questions first. I wouldn't just assume. Um, if you're sure they've made a mistake, I'd get data to prove it or to help them see it. And then I'd ask them about the data. The point is I'd ask questions and try to be helpful. 
I would also try to have a plan to go and fix it. In other words, if you think it's a mistake, you don't go and say, hey, boss, you screwed this up. What are you going to do about it? You go and say, look, I think this could be better. Um, here's the data that shows that we're not getting all the results we wanted. Here's my suggestion. Um, and it might sound like I'm tap dancing around it. I said at the beginning, if you have a good relationship with your boss and they screw up, you just tell them. They'll, if they're a good boss, they'll appreciate it. I remember a time five or six years ago where I basically was frustrated with something. I unfortunately no longer remember what I was frustrated with, but I sent my team, several of the leaders, a relatively angry email. Now, that's like three mistakes in a row. So sending something angry, sending something to a bunch of people at once, sending criticism in writing. These are all F-ups. Um, criticize in private. Uh, unless you're documenting a case to fire somebody, don't write it down. And the reason you don't write it down is because um, nobody likes to be criticized, but if they can go look at it over and over again in an email, they can get mad again and again and again. Years later, they can reread the email and be like, that bastard. Um, so I made a bunch of mistakes there. But the biggest thing is I was basically blaming my team for a bunch of my own screw ups or a bunch of things that weren't going right. And I was putting it all on them and they snapped back at me uh, politely. You know, the most senior of them came to me and said that email wasn't very helpful. And here's what we didn't like about it. And they were right. And, you know, I'd had a good night of sleep or maybe I was no longer hangry. And uh, I had to admit I had screwed up. So I apologize. So good bosses. If they've actually have made a mistake, they apologize. And I realize I'm giving a long winded answer here. I think it's important to cover all the nuances. If you have a good boss and you help them understand something, they should probably thank you. If you have a good boss and you ask them questions and it turns out they haven't made a mistake, um, enjoyable gaming, you can add it through our extension. Uh, moderation can tell you where. But um, you can also, if you're on mobile, uh, just stick it in chat for tonight because we're having problems with the extension on mobile. So um, if your boss has made a mistake, uh, you think they have and you ask them about it and they can explain a different view, that's fine. Like not everything that you disagree with is a mistake. So. With that, we'll wait for Enjoyable Gaming to see if he has another question. There's a few things I want to say to the loyal audience here tonight. Uh, number one, I love that you're here. Thank you for being here. I do this for you. Number two, uh, I've been surprised, but we have a lot of people listening to the podcast. And that's not well known. I haven't talked about it a lot. So if you have people that want to hear the Easy Coach, um, but they're not video watchers, which honestly, I don't watch a lot of video other than for work, um, they can get it on podcasts, listen in their car, listen when they work out. Uh, we publish podcasts on uh, through Libsyn onto six or seven different services. Um, <laughs> thank you, T-Weirdo. Um, adoration is pretty solid and chalupa whale shirts up yep i went solid blue shirt today because uh i really wanted um i really uh wanted um to make this a great broadcast coming back i was excited to do it after a long time uh and i'm glad people listen um so uh let's see uh, the other thing I want to say, though, is we grow through you. So what you do that's super valuable to me is you invite others and tell them about it. And I will say, uh, and I, now I'm tempting fate, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I get all sorts of positive feedback on this show, not only from you guys here in chat, which I really appreciate, but I get all sorts of positive feedback where uh, people email me, they reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, and I don't get negative feedback, which means at least the people who hate it just silently drift away or find out it's not for them. So what I would say is if you have friends that you think might like it, uh, please point them to theeasycoach.com 
uh, to this channel, to our YouTube channel, and have them check it out because we grow through word of mouth. We grow through you exposing us to your peers. A lot of people share things around at work, and that's fantastic. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because my goal is to take the expertise I've developed over a long career and share it here to save you learning the hard way. I said at the beginning of the broadcast, I got myself fired twice by having a big mouth and by not understanding that other people who were doing things differently than me were still adding value. Uh, I wanna save you that pain because uh, one of the ways I got myself fired is I had just, my company fired, I always say fired, they were doing layoffs in a down market um, and uh, I had just adopted my daughter. So I was the sole breadwinner. Um, yeah, you're on Twitch to help us speed run in our careers. You know, llama eat llama, that might be a keeper quote. So you can take credit for that when I reuse it later and forget to attribute it to you. That's exactly what I wanna do is help you speed run your careers and your lives. Um, this is like level tips. Uh, it's cheat sheet for a career and a life. Anyway, the point is, I managed to get myself laid off from a job right after we'd adopted. So we went from double income, no kids, to my wife planning to stay home with our daughter, and then me, we went to no income with kids. So I don't know, no income with kids, like nuke. And I felt nuked, even though it's a different spelling. So... All right, Lami, Lami, you get those royalty checks going. That's right. So a couple more questions came in. We'll wind up with that. I do want to advertise first. Um, look, our next show will be Monday. Uh, we'll do uh, Kristen Returns for Coaching. It'll be late. It'll be after I normally get home from work. So it'll be 8 p.m. PDT. But we'll follow up with Kristen, who's going to report back. She's here in chat. She's Kristen here in chat. She's going to report back on a couple books she's read as well as the things she's been working on since our last visit. And we'll coach on things she wants to talk about. Um, I'm super proud of her. I think she's going to crush it in her career over time. Um, and I love the fact she comes on her show on the show to share what she's learning publicly. So I'm looking forward to talking to her on Monday. And then next Wednesday, we're going to talk about the secret to doing what you want. And basically, how can you drive your life in a direction that will let you do what you want rather than just earn money? Um, uh, life is short um, and people spend most of that life at work. Tr I'm going to talk about not how to do it tomorrow, but how to get yourself into a position to do what you love. And for a lot of us, that begins with discovering what you love. Okay, so we got a couple more good questions. Um, uh, I Pashi says, what a funny topic because I just find myself with a huge setback. Um, so uh, you'll get a lot out of this end. So we're going to cover the last questions. How important is accountability in today's work face? I think it should be workplace. Shouldn't it become more normalized? God, I wish it would. Um, look, uh, accountability comes from leaders and you can only have accountability in a workplace where there's someone willing to set the standard who can handle the discomfort and where there's enough trust that people don't run away from the accountability. So accountability is a leadership problem. We talk all the time about this book, Extreme Ownership, and in Extreme Ownership, they put forth that all problems are leadership problems. I'm not sure that's completely true. Um, Sprint Speed says another book I recommend, Leadership and Self-Deception, is great. Uh, since we keep talking about books, uh, I'll pull it up so you can always go find it. I'm going to pop this up over my face real quick. If you've never looked at it, this is the Easy Coach. Uh, website are recommended books. The URL is too small to read. It's just the easycoach.com and you can click on books at the top and you get all our recommended books. So all the books I'm referencing are here. Um, Leadership and Self-Deception is my number one book. Um, Sprint Speed, go ahead and say, uh, or Kristen, 
how did that book help you with accountability? Because I think it's great um, as a book overall, but I've never exactly thought about it for accountability. Um, I could probably figure out what you mean, but it'd be better to hear it from you. Um, but another book that covers this a lot, uh, Responsibility. Let's see, where is it? Um, uh, it's this book, um, Extreme Ownership. Uh, talks about everything being a leadership problem. People not being willing to take accountability is partly at least how they're being led. So I'm going to drop this off from over top of my face. Um, but uh, and I it ends up over my face because I blow it up. So it's big. Um, accountability should be super normal in a workplace. You need a leader who's willing to do it. And you need people who understand that they're not going to get punished if they own things. Um, they do have to improve. Like there's a difference between, hey, I can own something and not do anything about it. Like, yeah, I screwed that up. So what? That isn't going to work. But they've got to be able to safely own it without being ostracized or made into lepers. So I think it's super important. It's a leadership challenge. You can set an example. All right. Last question. Um, uh, let's see. What sprint speed say about this? I've always been aware of the concept of trying to take responsibility. Um, yeah. Yeah, this idea of thinking inside the box, which is in leadership and self-deception. Look, as soon as you start to blame others or treat others as objects, you're not going to take ownership. Kristen says it forces you to realize you need to take ownership of your own heart and mind. Yes, we love to blame others. Um, uh, so we love to blame other people. Um, and it's because we don't want to feel bad. Um, you got to get, it will help you to get good at feeling bad. We talked some, there's a lot of fans of my buddy Devin Nash here. Um, Devin uh, is a Buddhist. I get a lot from Buddhist teaching and Buddhist teaching specifically teaches that feelings will pass, that everything is transient. Now, I'm not going to explain the whole religion. I'm not qualified. But uh, they go on to feel this whole world is transient. I'll just say that, look, take a nap. Have something to eat. Get drunk. Uh, your feelings will probably change um, by the next day. And if you, if you don't get good at what they call sitting with your feelings... Um, uh, if you don't, uh, let things, um, if you don't let people, uh, get comfortable with sitting their feelings, and if you're not good at tolerating feeling bad a little bit, not lashing out, you're going to have trouble leading. All right. Uh, we got two more questions. Uh, Kyle, I see your question that fell out and I understand what you mean. I think moderation wasn't sure what that question meant, so I'll take it at the end. The last question in the tool is, how would you give the best first impression at a new job so as not to even get to the point of a setback? Uh, that question's a little tricky, and it's a little off topic. Um, setbacks are going to happen, and so we could talk about how to make first impressions. <laughs> Hey, Shadow, you're coming in a little late, but I love the raid. Thank you. Uh, we were just actually winding up, but the whole Fox Den has just shown up with 50 people. So we might be going into extra innings with the show if that happens. Um, so what I would say, two things for the Fox Den if you're here. Uh, we're, um, uh, let's see. Um, we're talking today about overcoming setbacks and uh, for overcoming setbacks, uh, we've gone through an hour on it. But if you want to ask questions, we were just winding down, but we love the new audience. So welcome in. And I'm happy to go longer. Um, going to have a drink, though. Oh, Shadow, you had me extend that command. You got to type it out now. 
Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Shadow's our lead mod, and uh, she had me change the, um, I think it's questions. There you go. Uh, she had me change the chatbot command. So if you want to vote up questions, what you do is you go to our extension, pop it open, and either vote on a question that's in there or ask one of your own. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the other thing you can do is we do seem to be having a problem. We had to make a change to the extension on mobile. Um, and uh, we had to change, uh, we had to make a change to the extension because Twitch made a change to how they work and we appear to have broken it on mobile. So if you're on mobile, you may have to go to the link that just came up uh, or you may have trouble asking questions. We're gonna work on that right now and get it fixed for our next broadcast. Anyway, today's topic was overcoming setbacks. And if you're having a problem, uh, in your career where you've had a setback, we can talk about it uh, and uh, ask questions. I shared a little bit. I'll run back through um, my steps for overcoming setbacks. Basically, here they are in short order for those of you who just joined us. Um, thank you for the follow, JSOHC. Um, so look, if something goes wrong, uh, here's what you do. Number one, Something goes wrong at work in your career. You break something, you screw it up, you miss something, you're late. Own it. Face the problem. Um, no excuses. And definitely the most important thing is don't make excuses to yourself. Even if you end up making an excuse to someone else or talking about a mitigating circumstance, don't uh, make excuses to yourself. Be man or woman enough to look at yourself and say, you know, I didn't do that as well as I could have. And actually, a lot of people have trouble with this. They so badly need their self-image to be strong, and we were just talking about this, they can't stand anything going wrong, and they can't stand um, uh, pain, emotional pain. You're not going to go very far in your career, and we were just talking about Devin Nash and Buddhism and sitting with your discomfort. If you can't take some discomfort and realize it will go away and that feeling bad isn't fatal, um, doesn't have to be anyway, uh, feeling bad isn't fatal. If you can function through feeling bad, it will get better, but also you'll overcome the setback. The second thing I said is be willing to learn from them. Be willing to learn visibly. Right. Be willing to say, yeah, I screwed that up. How can I learn? What can I do better? Be willing to ask for help. Go to your boss and say, I didn't do that very well. That didn't work out. How can I learn? How can I do better? Um, if you screw up or have a setback, this is a really good time to put in extra hours. In other words, everyone has values and they have things they do well. They have value at work. When you screw up, there are things you're good at. Make sure you're killing it on the things that you're good at so that you get some forgiveness or some balance to the view of the things you screwed up. Um, be patient and have humility. Uh, time heals all wounds. A lot of people, they let a setback um, run them out of a job or run them out of a relationship. Having enough patience, and this goes to sitting with your discomfort, having enough patience to realize, you know, I'm going to have to accept being in the doghouse for a little while. Uh, this is the classic in a relationship, sleeping on the couch. Uh, you can't sleep on the couch forever, but if somebody needs distance, you can be patient for a couple days. Um, humility. If you've had a setback, this is not a great time to beat your chest, ask for a raise, any of that other stuff. Um, so uh, be willing to be humble and admit you've had mistakes. And finally, um, refute actual falsehoods, though. If something's broken and not working, um, be willing, uh, like if someone if there is a problem, you've had a setback, but there are things you didn't really do or that aren't really broken or there's bad data, 
correct those misunderstandings. Now, you may have to get evidence to do it, and you don't want to appear defensive, but you do want to stand up for yourself if someone else is simply blaming you. Finally, if you do all these things, get a clean start and go somewhere else if you're going to be in the doghouse forever. But that's only after you've been patient, worked hard, fixed the problems, shown you can learn, owned it. And look, I told one story already of something I screwed up at Amazon. I've had multiple massive failures at Amazon the biggest of which is I broke something that Jeff Bezos was personally looking for me to build and ship. It's a story I've told on the stream other times. I had Jeff personally mad at me and directly emailing me about how could I screw something like that up. And I lived through it and got promoted. And I did it via this recipe. Um, and the recipe was own it, fix it, be humble, learn from it, and deliver more value. Do that. The other piece of advice I gave, and then we'll go back to Q&A with all the new folks who are here. So if you have questions about anything I've said or stuff you'd like to know about setbacks, or let's see, we were posting this earlier. Shadow wasn't here and her team wasn't here. So let me reshare. Um, I'm gonna pop up over my face the article I wrote. Um, not that, uh, I use LinkedIn a lot. And if you ever want more content, that's not on our website or not broadcast, I sometimes publish articles on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, Kristen, I can share more about that example sometime, maybe on your coaching session Monday, if you want to know how I screwed up with Bezos, we can talk about it. Um, so that'll be an advertisement for people to come to your session Monday at 8 PM. But. I wrote this article about asymmetric consequences. So if you have questions about that, I can answer those too. The other point was go to LinkedIn uh, and you uh, should be on that if you wanna build a career. Um, you're not gonna build a good career uh, without having a network and your network comes from LinkedIn. So um, <clears throat> going back to questions, uh, I shared some of the stuff I'd done um, <clears throat> we have a couple questions here. I'll answer them and then we'll see if there's anything else um, the new crew wants to talk about. So the next question, which moderation will pin to the top, is uh, do you ever collect the data and throw a percentage or give odds of something failing? Absolutely. In other words, uh, I do plan for Anytime you start a project, you should assess what is the risk of something failing. And I think it's completely appropriate to categorize an effort as this effort is high risk um, or not. This effort is pretty certain. Uh, I give odds all the time. And I think that's really good for your team if you need to tell your team, look, we're gonna try something that may not work, we're gonna do everything we can to make it work, but if it doesn't work, that's okay. We're gonna learn from it. That's setting up a good culture. Um, and I don't know anyone who bats a thousand. Uh, I was talking about where I screwed up in front of Bezos. We should talk about where Bezos screwed up in front of the world, because he admits it. Um, I was part of a project that was a Jeff idea called the Fire Phone. So we had built Fire Tablets and Fire TV, uh, which are very popular, and he wanted to build a phone. And he had a specific idea for a phone that was going to have a 3D interface. And bottom line is, the company sunk a ton of resources into this phone a bunch of people were trying to tell him, hey, this doesn't look like it's going to work too well. And um, uh, nonetheless, he was the inspiration behind it. It went forward. It launched. We sold a tiny number of them. We started out with the phone priced at $99. A day later, we dropped it to $0.99. Cents. And within some number of weeks, we pulled it down altogether and um, we wrote off $170 million of phones that were in a warehouse that went in a dumpster instead. Uh, that's a massive failure. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, it says, uh, Lama, that's really cool. One of the designers for the phone spoke at my university. It was pretty interesting on the technical front. Yeah, it's a case, by the way, of a technically brilliant product in a way that wasn't, it was, I would say the company was more in love with the WYSI 3D technology than with any real customer problem customers cared about. And that was a failure, particularly for a company that prides itself on focusing on the customer. It got too in love with the cool technology. Um, so anyway, yeah, all the time. I think it's always good to assess your odds. And a book I always talk about, this book, Decisive, I haven't brought up yet tonight. It talks about when you're making a decision, which is kind of like planning for a project, you can do something called a pre-parade and a pre-mortem. So a lot of people know this idea that after a project's over, you do a post-mortem and you say, what went wrong? Um, but you can do a pre-mortem. And a pre-mortem basically asks, hey, we're about to launch this 